very, very good relationships over the last little while with our water the situation better. Community. I think you can see He's still talking about how great he is for the black community. I feel that they really wanted me to come right, to the community. hold you guys out. I think I, I did a great job and a great service, not only for the country, but even for the president in getting him to produce his press. Secretary Clinton. Well, just listen to what you heard. And clearly, as Donald just admitted, he knew he was going to stand on this debate stage and Lester Holt was going to be asking us questions. So he tried to put the whole racist birther lie to bed. We're still talking but about the birth certificate. Dear Lord. He has we only got 90 minutes really here. Started his political you, activity. Your campaign started it before. This lie that our first black president. He went with it, but you guys started it. An American citizen. You started it. There was absolutely no evidence for it, but he persisted. He persisted your year campaign after year planted it in 2007. Some of his to try to take supporters, Obama down. people that he was trying to bring into his fold, apparently believed it or wanted to believe it. But remember. Donald started his career back in 1973 being sued by the Justice Department for racial discrimination because he would not rent apartments in one of his developments to African Americans and he made sure that the people who worked for him understood that was the policy. He actually was sued twice by the Justice Department. So he has a long record about the issues. of engaging in racist behavior and the birther yes. lie was a very hurtful one you know barack obama is a man of great dignity that's what you were saying when you were and running I against tell him no. how much it bothered him and annoyed him when you brought it up in 2007 yeah it bothered him then real thing so look it up but i like to remember what Michelle Obama said in her amazing speech at our Democratic National Convention. When they go low, we go high. Really? You, and Barack you Obama paraphr- went high, despite Donald Trump's you, best efforts Millennia to Trump bring him down. Mr. Trump, uh, you can respond, then we're going to First lady? Up. I respond. First of all, I got to watch in preparing for this some of your debates against Barack Obama. You treated him with terrible disrespect. And I watch the way you talk now about how lovely everything is and how wonderful you are. It doesn't work that way. You were after him, you were trying to, you even sent out or your campaign sent out pictures of him in a certain garb, very famous pictures. I don't think you could deny that. But just last week, your campaign manager said it was true. So when you try to act holier than thou, it really doesn't work. It really she doesn't work. Yeah, as we all tried it. Lawsuit. It didn't work. Yes, when President I was very young, years, I brought it to my father's company. I had a real estate company in Brooklyn, said. Queens. And oh, we, well. along with many, many other companies throughout the country, it was a federal lawsuit, were sued. We settled the suit with zero, with no admission of guilt. It was very easy to do, but they sued many people. I notice you bring that up a lot, and uh, you know I also notice the <coughs> nasty commercials that you do on me in so many different ways, which I don't do on you. Maybe I'm trying to save the money, but frankly, sure. I look I look at that and I say, isn't that amazing? Because I settled that lawsuit with no admission of guilt, but that was a lawsuit brought against many real estate firms, wow. and it's just one of those things. I'll go on one step further. In Palm Beach, Florida, tough community, a brilliant community, a wealthy community, probably the wealthiest community there is in the world. I opened a club and he snorted because really he says that at like 10 places. No discrimination against African Americans, against Muslims, against anybody. And it's a tremendously successful club, and I'm so glad I did it. And I have been given great credit for what I did and I'm very very proud of it and that's the way I feel that is the true way I feel our next segment is called securing America we want to start with the 21st century war happening every day in this country our institutions are under cyber attack and our secrets are being stolen so my question is who's behind it and how do we fight it Secretary Clinton this answer goes to you the Russians well I think cyber security Cyber warfare will be one of the the biggest challenges facing the next president because clearly we're facing at this point uh, two different kinds of adversaries. There are the independent hacking groups that 
do it mostly for uh, commercial reasons to try to steal information that they then can use to make money. But increasingly, we are seeing cyber attacks coming from states, uh, organs of states. There the most goes. recent and troubling of these has been Russia. There we go. There's Saw no that doubt coming now that Russia the has pike. used cyber attacks against all He's kinds of organizations in our country. Russia I am the enemy, deeply dude. concerned we don't want Russia about to be this. The enemy. I know Donald's uh, really don't. Praise, praiseworthy of uh, Vladimir Putin, but war. Putin is playing a really tough, long game here. Putin and is surrounded by NATO. Is to it's moving in on him. Uh, cyber attacks Liar. to hack into government uh, files, to hack now into personal to play files, the hack into the Democratic Putin. National Committee. And we recently uh, have learned that, you know, that this is one of their uh, preferred methods of trying to wreak havoc and collect information. We need to make it very clear, whether it's Russia, China, Iran, or anybody else, the United States has much greater capacity. And we are not going to sit idly by and permit state actors to go after our information, our private sector information or our public sector information. And we're going to have to make it clear that we don't want to use the kinds of tools that we have. We don't want to engage in a different kind of warfare, but we will defend the citizens of this country. And the Russians need to understand that. I think they've been treating it as almost a, a probing. Uh, how far would we probing. go? How All much the would we do? And that's why I was, so, All the I was so shocked when Donald publicly invited Putin to hack into Americans. That is, that is just unacceptable. It's one of the reasons why 50 national security officials who served in Republican information in, in administration have said that Donald is unfit to be the commander in chief. It's comments like that that really worry people who understand the threats that we face. Mr. Trump, you have two minutes in the same question. Yeah, Who's behind it? I, I, I do want to say that I was just endorsed, and more are coming next week. It'll be over 200 admirals, many of them are here. Admirals and generals endorsed me to oh, lead but this But that's country. a good old boys' club right there. Uh, just happened, keep and many more are coming. And I'm very proud of it. Uh, in addition, I His was just military endorsed by buddies. ICE. That's I've never endorsed anybody bunch. before on immigration. Uh, I was just endorsed by ICE. We talk about immigration? Are we going to get to that? Or is it almost over? Agents. So when uh, Secretary Clinton talks about this, I mean, I'll take the admirals and I'll take the generals any day over the political hacks that I see that have led our country so brilliantly over the last 10 years with their knowledge, okay? Because look at the Let's mess you took about 10 years. In. Look at the mess that we're in as far yeah, as the cyber. It. I agree to parts of what Secretary Clinton said. Uh, we should be better than anybody else, and perhaps we're not. I don't think anybody knows it was Russia that broke into the DNC. There's no way of knowing that it's Russia. Russia, Russia, but I don't... Maybe it was. I mean, it could be Russia, but it could also be China. It could also be China. lots of other people. It also could be somebody sitting on their bed that weighs 400 pounds, okay? But she wants to use it to go to war with Russia. To she's itching DNC. for that. But what did we learn with DNC? Hashtag we Syria. learned that Bernie Sanders was taken advantage of by your people, yeah. by Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Look what happened to her. But yeah, Bernie she ended Sanders up on her campaign. was taken advantage of. That's what we learned. Now, whether that was Russia, whether that was China, whether it was another country, we don't know. Because the truth is, under President Obama, we've lost control of things that we used to have control well, of. the internet's uncontrollable, we came in son. With the internet, we came up with the Hackers internet. Hackers are always going to get around your Secretary your Clinton and myself would agree shit. very much. When you look at what ISIS is doing with the internet, they're beating us at our own game. ISIS. So we have to get we very, talk about very them, tough please? on cyber and cyber warfare. Now, uh, killing Gaddafi and starting the war in Syria problem. created son, ISIS. He's 10 years old. Not to mention Iraq. He computers. He is so good with these computers, it's unbelievable. Can we talk about that? The security aspect no. of cyber is very, Almost out of time very here. tough. About and maybe it's, uh, it's hardly doable. But I will say, we are not doing the job we should be doing. But that's true throughout our whole governmental society. Yeah, we true. have so many things that we have to do better, Lester. And certainly cyber is one of them. Secretary Clinton. Thursday. Well, I think there are a number of issues that uh, we should be addressing. Um, I have put forth a plan to defeat ISIS. Uh, it <laughs> to does fight involve ISIS, going after them online. I think we need to do much more 
uh, with our tech Fund companies every to, end of a war. Uh, prevent ISIS and their operatives uh, from being able to use the internet to radicalize, even direct uh, people in our country, in Europe, and elsewhere. But we also have to intensify our air strikes against oh ISIS uh, she wants more and war. eventually support our Arab and Kurdish uh, partners to be able to actually take out ISIS uh, in Raqqa and their You want ISIS to go, to, go away? We're Stop trying to overthrow Assad. The military is assisting Assad is fighting ISIS, uh, and, and we're fighting we're both. That, uh, within Assad the year, we'll is fighting ISIS, and we're ISIS fighting both. Iraq, Why are we not talking about that? Really squeeze them in Syria. Squeeze uh, them in Syria. She wants full-on war. And Russia's there? Okay, we'll fight them too. This to, fucking uh, warmonger. Volunteer for the Neoconservative money, bullshit. Uh, foreign weapons. So we have to make this the top priority, and I would also... Uh, make war the top priority. To That's what just happened right here. Right I was there. involved in a number of efforts to take out al-Qaeda leadership when I was Secretary of State, including, of course, taking out bin Laden. And I think we need to go after Baghdadi uh, as well. Make we that one of our Baghdad. organizing principles because we've got to defeat ISIS and we've got to do everything we can to disrupt their uh, propaganda efforts online. Let's stop funding ISIS. ISIS. Let's, ISIS. Let's, ISIS. Stop funding ISIS. ISIS. Let's defeat them that way. Over there, but there are American Neoconservative bullshit. Commit acts of terror on American soil. The latest incident, of course, the bombings we just saw in uh, New York and New Jersey, the knife attack at a mall in Minnesota in the last year, deadly attacks in San Bernardino and Orlando. Uh, I'll ask this to both of you. Tell us specifically how you would prevent homegrown attacks by American citizens, Mr. Trump. Well, well first I have to say one thing, very important. Uh, Secretary Clinton is talking about taking out ISIS. We will take out ISIS. Well, President Obama and Secretary Clinton created a vacuum the way they got out of Iraq. Because yep. they got out, what, they shouldn't wow. have been in, but once they got in, they had to get the out. way they, they got out was Bush, a disaster. And Bush ISIS negotiated the exit. So she talks about taking them out. She's been doing it a long time. She's been trying to take them out for a long time. But they wouldn't have even been formed if they left some troops behind. Or if we had never gone in there. Or maybe something Can you back it up to not having the Iraq war real quick? Or, as I've been saying for a long time, and I think you'll agree because I said it to you once, had we taken the oil, and we should have taken the oil, ISIS would not have been able to form either because the oil was their primary source of income. And now they have the oil all over the place, including the oil, a lot of the oil. The CIA Florida, is their primary source of income, of son. Secretary Clinton. Well, I hope the fact checkers are turned up and fact turning checker. up the volume and really working hard. Pump up the volume, so, pump up the volume, pump, pump. Donald supported the invasion of Iraq. Wrong. That is absolutely Why are we arguing whether he did? You voted again. for it. We actually advocated for And then advocated in Libya. Libya. And urged that uh, Gaddafi be taken out after... Let's talk about your vote, not his. ...some business with him one time. You warmonger. But the larger point... Yeah, the larger point is that you're a warmonger. ...constantly is George W. Bush Lord. made the agreement about when American troops would exactly. leave That's Iraq. That's true. Not Barack Obama. And the only way that American troops could have stayed in Iraq is to get an agreement from the then Iraqi government that would have protected our troops. And the Iraqi government would not give that. But let's talk about the question you asked, Lester. The question you asked is, what do we do here in the United States? That's the most important part of this. How do we prevent attacks? How do we protect our people? And I think we've got to have an intelligence surge How about if we stop where the war? we are looking for every surge. scrap of information. I was so proud of law enforcement in New York, in uh, Minnesota, in New Jersey. You know, they responded so quickly, so professionally to the attacks uh, that occurred by Rahami. And they brought him down. And we may find out more information because he is still alive, which may prove That's to be an be intelligence an uh, benefit. So we've got to do everything we can to vacuum up intelligence from Europe, from the Middle East. That means we've got to work more closely so with our allies. War. And that's something that Donald has been very dismissive of. Right. We're working with NATO, the 
We need to catch more longest people to kill. Military alliance in the history of the That's world right. to position. really turn our attention to terrorism. We're, We're working more with our friends in the Middle East, many of which We're in 135 you know, countries are Muslim now. majority nations. We've bombed seven. Donald has consistently you want more? insulted what are you nuts? Muslims abroad, Muslims at home, when we He's need nuts. to be cooperating with Muslim nations and with the American Muslim community. She cooperates the with front Saudi lines. Arabia. They can provide information to us that we might not get anywhere else. They need to have close working cooperation with law enforcement in these communities, Lord. not be alienated and pushed away uh, as some alienated. of uh, Donald's rhetoric, right unfortunately, okay. has uh, led to. Mr. 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 Well, well, I'd have to respond. Please respond. The, oh, please. Um, the secretary said very strongly about working with, we've been working with them for many years. And we have the greatest mess anyone's ever seen. You look at the Huge Middle mess. East, it's a total mess. mess. Under your direction to a large extent. Yeah. But you look at the Middle East, you started the Iran deal. That's a, another beauty where you have a country that was ready to fall. I mean, they were doing so badly. They were choking on the sanctions. And now they're going to be actually probably a major power at some point pretty soon, the way they're going. But when you look at NATO, that's a long I was story. asked I'm not on a major show, it over him. what do you think of NATO? Now, you have to understand I'm a business person. I did really well, but I have common sense. And I said, well, I'll tell you, I haven't given lots of thought to NATO, but two things. Number one, the 28 countries of NATO, many of them aren't they paying their fair share. Number two, and that bothers me because we should be, as we're defending them, and this they should sense. at least be paying us what they're or supposed to be Or we could paying. just get rid of NATO because we're stopping the war. What if we just stop the war and, and don't need NATO? Two, I said it very strongly. Yeah? NATO can we try that? Please? Because, and I was very Instead of this, and it was getting everyone to put more money into NATO, in let's just get rid of NATO. Let's do that. Because we're going to stop the war. Because you're going to write in Frank Barrish, right? Because, I mean, what, and are you kidding me? Of course you're going to write in Frank Barrish. What are you, talking about four months ago, I read on the front page of the Wall Street Journal that NATO is opening up a major terror division. And I think that's great. NATO is pushing Russia towards war. That's what NATO is doing. Surrounding NATO. Russia and moving closer and closer. Other what do you think Russia is going to do? NATO. But I said they have to focus on terror also. And they're going to do that. And that was, believe me, I'm sure I'm not going to get credit for it, but that was largely because of what I was saying and my criticism of NATO. I think over. we have to get Love NATO to go into the Middle East with us in addition to surrounding nations, and we have to knock the hell out of ISIS, and we have to do it fast. When ISIS formed in this vacuum created by Barack Obama and Secretary Clinton, and believe me, you were the ones that took out the troops. Not only that, you named the day. They couldn't believe it. They sat back probably and said, I Lester, can't believe covered, it. They said, no, wait a minute. We've covered when they ground. formed, When they formed, this is something that never should have happened. It should have never happened. None you of it should have happened. Taking out ISIS, but you were there, and the you were The wars shouldn't state have happened. Little infant. Now it's in over thirty countries, and you're going to stop them? I don't think so, Mr. Trump. You, with a lot of these are judgment questions. You <laughs> had supported the war in Iraq before the invasion. What makes your? I did not what, support what, the war two, in Iraq. Two thousand two. That is a mainstream media nonsense put out by her. Because she, frankly, I think the best person in her campaign is mainstream media. My question is, since <laughs> you, would you like to hear? Why is your, I was why against is your the war. Wait a minute. I was against the war in Iraq, just so you put it out. The record shows I, otherwise. The record but why does is, not show why was you, is your The record any... shows that I'm right. When I did an interview with Howard, Howard Stern, Stern, very lightly, first time anyone's asked me that, I said, said sure. very lightly, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, Who sure. knows? That's said, all they got. I then did an interview with Neil Cavuto, we talked about huh. the economy is more important. I then the spoke vampire Sean Neil Hannity, Cavuto. which everybody refuses to call Sean Hannity. I had numerous conversations with Sean Hannity at Fox, and Sean Hannity said, and he called me the other day, and I spoke He's to like, him. Hey, about the other day. It. He said you were totally against war because he was for the war. Why is and we, excuse me, better? And that was before the war started. Sean Hannity said very strongly. Most of us were against the war. Why are we arguing this? Let's argue why she. I was against the war. He watch said, more war. Can we talk about the Sean ones that she's of. done and wants to do? Instead of arguing about what he said on Howard and Stern? For the love of Christ? Also, not very much, because we should have never been there. But nobody calls Sean Hannity. And then they did an article in a major magazine shortly after the war started. Hashtag nobody called Sean I Hannity. in 04. But they did an article which had me totally against the war in Iraq. 
And one of your compatriots said, you know, whether it was before or right after, Trump was definitely, because if you read this article, there's no doubt. He didn't but care, didn't affect him. He really was like, yeah, I don't think it's a good Sean idea, but I'm, this was I'm not like war serving war. in Congress he and have a vote on the war. Can we talk about why she did that? And, and then why she didn't learn her fucking lesson from that? So she did it in Libya, and then she did it in Syria, and now there are 10 million refugees around the world? Can we talk about that, please? Mrs. Well, I have much better judgment than she does. There's no question about that. Oh, I also have why you need to write in Frank Harris? That right she there. Is. You know, I have a much better... She spent, let me tell you, she spent hundreds of millions of dollars on an advertising. You know, they get Madison Avenue into a room, they put names. Oh, temperament, let's go after. I think my strongest asset maybe by far, is by temperament. Oh, dear Lord. I have a winning temperament. Oh, I know please. how to win. She does not have to win. Clinton. Wait, the AFL cio the other day... He's like, they think I'm winners too. Everybody screen. thinks I'm a winner. Can we talk about more people who think I'm a winner Secretary instead of the real issues real but quick? was totally out of control. I said, there's a person with a temperament that's got a problem. Secretary Clinton. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let let's uh, talk about two <laughs> important issues that were briefly mentioned by Donald. First, NATO. You know, NATO as a military alliance has something called Article Five, and basically it says this: an attack on one is an attack, attack on, on another. That's what is not what he's know, talking about. Time he's saying making them pay. But let's talk about getting rid of 11, when the 28 nations of NATO said that they would go to Afghanistan with us yeah. to fight terrorism. But Dick Cheney that took the buildings down, so that was a side. mistake. With respect to Iran, when I became Secretary of State, Iran was weeks away from having enough nuclear material to form a bomb. They had mastered the nuclear fuel cycle under the Bush administration. They had built covert facilities. They had stopped them with centrifuges that were whirling away. And we had sanctioned them. I voted for every sanction against Iran when Good I was in the you. Senate. But it wasn't enough. So I spent a year and a and half now putting fight together Good. a coalition that Syria included Russia quick. and China what could that to cost impose us? the toughest and blood and sanctions on Iran. Neoconservative and liar. we drive them to the negotiating table. And my successor, John Kerry, and President Obama got a deal that put a lid on Iran's nuclear program without firing a single shot. That's diplomacy. That's coalition building. That's working with other nations. The other day, I saw Donald so saying that war in there Libya, were some Iranian Syria, sailors on a ship that. in the we waters off of Iran, and they were taunting American sailors who were on a nearby ship. He said, you know, if they taunted our sailors, I'd blow them out of the water and start another war. Yeah. That's that would not good judgment. That of course is it would start a war. Is right he stupid? To be commander in chief. To be They're both idiots, man. Taunted. Jesus. And the worst really? part of no, what you heard really Donald here? say has been about right nuclear in weapons. Oh, he has said repeatedly that he didn't care if other nations got nuclear weapons. Japan, South Korea, even Saudi Arabia. It has been the policy of the United States, Democrats and Republicans, to do everything we could to reduce the proliferation of nuclear weapons. He Which even said, well, you know, if there were nuclear everywhere. war in the East Asia, well, you know, that's you fine. Know you know, have a have... good time, folks. And in fact, his cavalier but attitude about nuclear nuked. weapons is so deeply troubling. That is They're the number one threat we war. face in the world. And it becomes particularly threatening if terrorists ever get their hands on any nuclear material. So a man who can be provoked by a tweet should not have his fingers anywhere near the nuclear codes, as far as I think anyone with any sense about this should be concerned. Uh, uh, it's uh, getting a little bit old, I must say. Listen, it's a good one, I, though. I would like well to, describes not, the problem. Not a, it's not an accurate one at all. Oh, it's not an wow. accurate one. So I just it's want like to just give a lot of things. And just a to really respond. unhappy couple argue. I agree with argue. her on one thing. The single <laughs> greatest problem the world has is nuclear armament nuclear weapons yes. not global warming like well, you no, think global warming your, your president he's thinks. an idiot uh, nuclear is the single greatest threat 
uh, just to go well, down the list. Stopping the war so everyone doesn't defend, use the defend, nuclear weapons. We defend Germany. We defend South Korea. We defend Saudi Arabia. We defend countries. Yeah. They do not pay us, but they should be paying us because we are. That's an irrelevant thing. We need to stop the war, not fortune. get paid for That's it. Why we're you creep. Losing. We're losing. We lose on everything. I say, who makes these? We lose on everything. Well, I said that it's very possible. It's almost over for the love of God. They don't pay a fair share because this isn't 40 years ago where we could do what we're doing. Hashtag this isn't we 40 years ago. Japan, a, a behemoth selling us cars by the minute. We need to move on. Wait, yes, we important. do, please. Can All we move I on? Said was they may have to defend themselves or they have to help us out. We're a country that owes $20 trillion. They have to help us out. Our, our as last... far as the nuclear is concerned, oh boy. I agree. It is the single greatest threat that this country has. Which leads to my next question as we head to our last segment here on the Scope oh, of yeah, the last segment. America on nuclear weapons. <laughs> President Obama reportedly considered changing the nation's long-standing policy on first use. Do you support the current policy? <laughs> Mr. Trump, you have two minutes on it. Well, I have to say that, uh, you know, for what Secretary Clinton was saying about nuclear with Russia, she's very cavalier in the way she talks about various countries. War with Russia, but yeah. But Russia's been expanding. They're, they have... They, much newer capability than we do. We have not been uh, updating from the new standpoint. I looked the other night, I was seeing B-52s Because we've crept there, NATO to their border. Your, your father, your grandfather could be they flying them. Uh, we are we're not, we're bringing it. We are Can we not stop it? up with other countries. Neither I would these like everybody to it. end it, just get rid of it. End it, the uh, war. But I would certainly not do first strike. I think that once the nuclear the alternative war. happens. War in general. End all wars. At Frank the same Barrett. time, we have to be prepared. I can't take anything off the table. Because you look at some of these countries, you look at North Korea. Uh, we're doing nothing there. China should solve that problem for us. China should go into North Korea. China is, is totally powerful as it relates to North Korea. And by the way, another one powerful is the worst deal I think I've ever seen negotiated that you started is the Iran deal. Iran is one of their biggest trading partners. Iran has power over North Korea. And when they made that horrible deal with Iran, they should have included the fact that they do something with respect to North Korea. And they should have done something with respect to Yemen and all these other places. And when asked to Secretary Kerry, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do add other things into the deal? One of the great giveaways of all time, of all time, including $400 million in cash. Nobody's ever seen that before. That turned out to be wrong. It was actually $1.7 billion in cash. Obviously, I guess, for the hostages, it certainly looks that way. So you say to yourself, why didn't they make the right deal? This is one of the worst deals ever made by any country in history. The deal with Iran will lead to nuclear problems. All they have to do is sit back 10 years and they don't have to do you're, much you're and they're going to end up fire. getting nuclear. I Israel met wants with Iran Bibi gone. Netanyahu Iran's going to be gone by the she end of the decade. She is not happy, Camper. All right. Mrs. Uh, well, Secretary Clinton, end of the decade, there will me, not be an Iran. Let me Iran. start by saying words matter. The wars words of this when you run for president, couple right here. And they here. really matter when you are president. And I want to reassure our allies in Japan and South Korea and elsewhere trying to act president that right we here. have mutual defense treaties and we will honor them. It is essential that America's word be good. And so I know that this campaign has caused some questioning and some worries on the part of many leaders across the globe. I've talked with a number of them. Uh, but I want to, on behalf of myself, and I think on behalf of a majority of the American people, say that, you know, our word is good. It's also important that we look at the entire global situation. There's no doubt that we have other problems with Iran, but personally I'd rather deal with the other problems having put that lid on their nuclear program than still to be facing that. And Donald never tells you what he would do. Donald, huh? Would he have started a war? Would he have bombed?